company. Welcome to the Offsides NFL Podcast. I'm Matt Ufford. Joining me in SB Nation Studios is Peter Schrager, writer for FoxSports.com, GQ, co-author of the Victor Cruz autobiography, Out of the Blue. There we go. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Thank you. And uh, also contributed to Showtime's Inside the NFL. Uh, is, is that all? Or you are that's it. That just general All hustler. around good guy. Yeah. Good ambassador for the world. Uh, you and I go back a couple of years. We do. Um, great, great times. Uh, I was dating someone whose friend was dating a fraternity brother of yours. Uh, fraternity, yeah. Uh, Halloween a couple of years ago, I show up at a party just begrudgingly go, and it's in like I guess the Lower East Side or something. We yep, go, yep. I walk in, and it's it's all my idiot frat brothers who I love, you know, my guys, <laughs> uh, their girlfriends, and this whole other scene of people that I. Did not know, and then see a familiar face in the back corner checking his phone for like a Seahawks score, and I said, "I know that dude." Yeah, and we talked for about three hours, and I think I was dressed as something offensive. You were probably dressed nothing at all. Sexy doctor, sexy doctor, which, which is which was just actually scrubs and uh, glasses, but uh, you know this face. You did it, and you're no longer with that girl. No, thankfully, you are a married man. Yes, I and am, and you are still a sexy doctor. So yeah. we're all good. We have another connection too, because uh, another one of the guys we went to college with is the uh, the do- the the shave dollar shave. <laughs> yes, the dollar you know shave Michael club. Dubin. Uh, I know him through another person. There that you I go. If you guys haven't seen the Dollar Shave Club ad, Google that. Oh, YouTube fantastic. it. It's so good, brilliant. Yeah. Are you an actual member of the Dollar Shave Club? I am. I am six dollars, I think, every month, and. Uh, you know, I don't use that many razors, so they show up, and I'm like, I've got like a stack of you razors. Got, you got the, you get the, 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 the white trash scrub. That's what it is. That's yeah, what I. I get that too. That's what it is. Uh, shave like uh, three times a week, begrudgingly. <laughs> We've used begrudgingly twice today. <laughs> it's a great word. It's a great word. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's get into things with uh, worst. That of the was worst. some good grab ass we just did. Though. That is. That's, that's what they call that's, it in the that's, industry. That's small talk. That's uh, <laughs> that's we start things off light. Uh, let's get into worst of the worst. We'll actually talk about the NFL on yeah, this uh, awesome. NFL podcast. Um, obviously, Chiefs still the worst team in the NFL for for now and the, the foreseeable future. But uh, I want to talk about the Jets' second quarter on yeah. Thursday night. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. Uh, three touchdowns allowed in something like fifty-two seconds, fifty-six. It was seconds. a New York minute. It was three touchdowns in fifty-two seconds uh, in some of the most incredible fashion. Three turnovers in like five plays. Yeah, and the Sanchez play that where he because uh, yeah. everyone talks about the fact he ran into the guys. But and the ball flops out and they score. But if you notice, he was going back to hand the ball off. There was no running back to take it. So yeah. like the fact that he even went to the wrong side <sighs> says so much. And this is Mark Sanchez's fourth season. He's not a rookie under the lights for the first time. He's been to two AFC championship games. He is taking such steps back in his fourth year that I wonder what his future really is going to be. Could it have been the running back's fault, though? Could have been. Yeah. Absolutely could have been, but they're a poorly coached team. It just, and uh, for all the times that Tim Tebow, and you'll watch, uh, no one really talks about this, but there should be a drinking game. Every time they show Tebow on the sidelines, he's just checking that wrist. <laughs> He's got the plays. I, there's nothing on that wrist. I, it's either it's like Bible scripture or it's something. He's just checking the wrist, but he's not going in. He's not doing anything, and he's definitely not relaying any information to Sanchez. Oh, that, the poor Jets. Um, I I just like that uh, it even even like the plays that weren't disastrously wrong, like the fact that. Uh, uh, the 83 yard swing pass to Shane yeah. Vereen just uh, yeah. if you look at Bart Scott on that play uh, um, he looks about 70 years old on that play the cornerback is nowhere to be found just horrible all around and we're in New York Jets fans are an interesting bunch and when they're good life is good and they will let you know and when they are bad the sky is falling so yeah. it's fun to just kind of monitor all that and obviously the news the news I love that it's news Sunday Fireman Ed retired I, I don't know how you retire from being a fan, but he says he's he's not quitting. No, but he's retiring. He's stepping down. So <sighs> the world grieves, and I think we'll find a way. I think he's, we'll find a way to move on. I, I will. I give him a, a slice of credit. He do, he doesn't fault uh, the Jets team. Like he like the, he faults like other fans for okay, for giving well, him crap. And it's like you know what? We should have started this with a moment of silence, dude. Because <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna miss Fireman Ed shouting J E T. It's funny. My editor at Fox Sports guy uh, Todd Barrett had a great joke. He said they should honor Fireman Ed with the E by not saying the E out loud. So it just should be J, and everyone just bows their head in silence. <laughs> T, S, Jets, 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 because Ed was a, uh, a fixture. But like so many Jets 
and Jets fans before him. He was a season tickets holder since 76. Never saw a Super Bowl, so sorry. Ed. Um, I don't feel bad for him at all. He brought that. <laughs> he brought all that attention on himself, and uh, is he's annoying. Like I don't need this. I agree. I, he, he is. He is not half as interesting as Denver's Barrel Man. I agree. Barrel Man's very cool. Uh, the Giants have a guy named License Plate Guy. I don't know oh, if you've ever seen him. Yeah. He wears the license plate. He's a cool guy. If He's you uh, if you search the SB Nation uh, YouTube channel, you can find a, a license plate guy talking to Amy K. Nelson. That's a good interview. I'll check yeah. it out. Uh, but every every team has this. But Ed kind of you know he was on he, he was on NFL Network on Monday talking about his decision. I mean the NFL. I, listen, I don't know, but that's an interesting interview. That's an interesting book. You know, I don't know if that's uh, if, if they need to go that route. I'm not interested in yeah, Ironman Ed. Nor am I'm I. happy. Like, if all I care about is that he's not going to be. Uh, it's bad enough to watch a Jets game in the yeah. first place, uh, and then like to get Fireman Ed on top of that. Happy not. I'm happy just, not see him. Uh, and I hate. And this is not a knock on ESPN or some of the fine work they do, but I cannot wait for the Tom Rinaldi somber. He started off the day as Fireman Ed. <laughs> he ended the day as Ed, Ed Anzalone. Anzalone. I, had that, I didn't learn his last name until uh, just this week. I know. It was like reading an obit, the way everyone was talking <laughs> about this guy. It was incredible news that this was like back page of the New York Daily News, that Fireman Ed was stepping down, and he wrote an op-ed, which was just heartfelt and amazing. <laughs> I don't... I, <laughs> I'll give you heartfelt. I don't know about amazing. Um, let's switch over to the best teams in the NFL. You, I will say... I don't think you get enough credit. You do your homework for things like the draft. Yep. And uh, I think you're one of the better prepared analysts. And uh, you have um, you have some good preseason picks. What, what was your preseason Super Bowl pick? Yeah, my preseason Super Bowl pick was Steelers-Packers. Whoops. All right. No, I don't know if it's whoops. I don't know if it's whoops. This Steelers team was very good with Ben Roethlisberger in the lineup. And I think they have one last run in them. Like, this defense is getting old. The offense is obviously old. But... If you get Roethlisberger back in there, all you need to do is get in that final 12. And this guy has done it before. I'm not True. backing off that, that prediction because they'll lose to the Ravens, whether he's there or not, in Baltimore, I think, this weekend. And they have a fairly manageable schedule. They'll probably be on the road in a playoff game, just like they were last year against Denver. And the AFC is lousy. The, the AFC is lousy, but it's interesting. It's like you've got these final four teams. You've got the Texans, who... On paper, 10-1, and one, they look dominant, but they are so banged up. If you look at their defense, yeah. they lost more guys, and they just played 10 quarters in five days. They are hurting. I wouldn't be shocked if they lose to the Titans this weekend just from exhaustion and all the injuries they have. And then the Patriots, yeah, they've put up 59 and 49 points back-to-back, -back, but a good, a good passing team can throw all over the Patriots. I'll keep to or not. And then the third team, everyone talks about is the Ravens, which are the most unbelievable, what are they, 10-2 and two right now. Yeah. Are nine and two, and their record does not show that this team has not won money games more than a field goal, more than a touchdown. They're in every game, and then the fourth team that you know everyone's just like, oh, they're back. Are the Broncos? They haven't played anyone since week AFC five. AFC West is weak, real weak. So, I'm not sold on any of those teams yet, and really? I would not be shocked if the Steelers get healthy and if Roethlisberger makes a run. I'm one of these guys where I don't jump ship on these predictions. Like, I I'm going with them. And the Packers, I still think once they get in the playoffs. They're a mm. tough team to beat. I, I, I they're think injured that also. Uh, the, the Packers are hurting. The, they've got a bad defense. They, they're missing two of their best players. Yep. Um, and they looked. Uh, the offense looked inept against the Giants. Yeah, you know, everyone gives Mike McCarthy a lot of credit for what a genius he is offensively, but he's been out coached a few times this season, and that offense looks stale. And coming yeah. out of, you know, the Giants' bye week, they were ready to explode, and that defense finally showed up. Uh, and if the Giants had lost, it would be skies falling for Giants fans this week. But they pretty much silenced any critics, and Eli's arm did not look tired, and Eli it is an elite quarterback. It, who? Where did this thing come up that like a quarterback's arm is tired? That's his entire job is to throw the ball. Yeah. Like they were I, saying, I, Matt Stafford before the you know, Sims was saying on the air before Texans played the Lions, I guess on Thanksgiving, Stafford was throwing sixty yard darts for two hours before the game. I'm like, what is his 20 they're attempts not, in a game going to be? He's they're playing not starting pitchers. Exactly. It's not like if they throw too many passes, they're going to tear their rotator cuff. And like, Eli Manning's been playing quarterback since he was three. Like, he'll be okay if he throws 25 passes against the Bengals. That whole tired arm thing, I, I want to find the person who came up with that. I know who it is. It. Really? I've actually, I've done the research because I was like, where'd that come? And I think it came from an interview with Greg Cosell, who's an NFL films like uh -huh. analyst. And Greg's a respected guy. I think he produces edge NFL matchup. Really respected guy, but he made that comment, and not to Greg's, whatever, but people ran with it. If you if you 
say anything negative about any of these quarterbacks or even hint at anything, it becomes a headline and people run with it. And so, it's worse in New York, of course. Oh, it's worse in New York. So Sims said, obviously, that Eli might not be elite on his Monday morning quarterback show. He since had said, hey, look, he's a Hall of Famer. I'm not saying... But everyone ran with it yep, and it became yep. a story upon a story upon... Um, so you're standing by, just to bring it back to uh, the Super Bowl picks, yeah. you're standing by Packers and, uh, and Steelers. Why not? Let's see, let's see when Roethlisberger gets back. You're, you're, that's a ballsy call, because I don't yeah. think that, that Steelers team looks like it's well, falling apart. I know I've heard your picks a few times, but like, who do you now, going into week 13, say is, oh, this team is head and shoulders above? Because I don't think there is one. I actually, uh, <laughs> as, a, as a writer, I should probably keep better track of this. I didn't come. I think before the season, I said... Um, uh, I, again, like I'm, I'm unprepared. I think yeah. I said Packers okay. for, for the NFC, which, um, y- yeah, I don't think they're yeah, going to have this. I mean, look, they won five straight games before this one with no Clay Matthews, with no Charles Woodson. I was, I was the pretty, Giants outclassed them. They were in New York. I think, you know, the Bears are the class of the NFC North right now. They've got a one game lead over the Packers, and we're filming this on a uh, Tuesday. The Packers can be, they've got five division opponents in their next six games. They could win out and win the NFC North, and then they're home at Lambeau for the playoffs. Are you going to bet against them at no. home at Lambeau? So, Although uh, the, the, I know Giants the Giants can handle them. them, I know. But um, uh, and then the AFC, I, I actually picked the Broncos. I, I, I that was you. one of my preseason three league. and three. I was not. I was like, about I was that. like Peyton Manning. He is Peyton Manning. I don't think that his neck or his arm are a huge issue because he's a talented quarterback. I think the Broncos are going to come out. I was, I, and that's one of the few, few times I've I've actually been correct. All you know, season. you know what's interesting about the Broncos is they played five games to start the season, and I, I don't know if the schedule offhand, but it was like Steelers, Falcons, Texans, Patriots, like just tough game, Chargers, tough games, and. The NFL, whether they'll admit it or not, they sort of designed it that way. So you had Peyton in prime time. You yeah, had him oh, on yeah. two Sunday night games. You had him on a Monday night game. Yeah. You had him at 4 o'clock against the Patriots, which was probably CBS's biggest rating of the year. And then after those five games, it's like, well, those are their five tough opponents. They play in the AFC West. Oh, yeah. And the other you know, conference they're going to play is the, the also-rans. They're going to have an okay time, and they'll be fine against the NFC South when the Panthers are not what we thought they were nope. going to be and the Saints aren't what they were going to be. So... I think the Broncos might finish the season out undefeated, regular season, uh, after that 3-3 three and three start. And then we're going to look at each other and say, okay, well, is this team good or not? I don't know because they haven't played anyone since October. Um, yeah, I guess we'll find out in the they coming play the weeks. Ravens. They play the Ravens in December in Baltimore. That'll be a good test. Um, let's move on to uh, talk about you a little bit. Cool. Because you, you hustle. You hustle. are out. <laughs> hustle. Uh, I like that uh, on Inside the NFL, you seem to be uh, kind of the connection for Phil Sims and Chris Collinsworth. You, like, teach them about the internet. <laughs> I don't teach them anything. They don't want to know. They don't want to learn. But uh, we've done a cool segment this year where it's kind of an online segment. Um, and you can check it out on Showtime's website or you can check it out on YouTube. But each week I go over what's buzzing on, like, Twitter and what like you guys are talking about and some of the other popular blogs online. And I get their reactions because we those guys could talk X's and O's for days mm-hmm. and you can either be into it or you're not into it but I, i'm telling you they come we come wednesdays to film in mount laurel and sims and collinsworth have seen every game already full games they watch it it's they love it they breathe it and they can talk about it they know every player in the nfl but you mentioned smoking jay cutler the blog and they look at you you know cross and that's fun and that's different and that's <laughs> that's kind of where this segment's been going and we've gotten some great reactions sims is you know the curmudgeon. He is. He's not going to deal with this online stuff. He doesn't want to hear it. But he is open to listen to it. Collinsworth's actually adapted to it, and James Brown's adapted to it. Um, but they they look forward to the segment too because I kind of introduce them to things that are being said. And a lot of times uh, they're so in the X's and O's, and they they talk to the players, they talk to the coaches. They don't know what you guys are talking about on you know 34th and 9th Street here in New York City. So it's good uh, to get that perspective from them. And I love being the conduit to that. Have you ever touched Phil Simms's hair? I haven't. It's like it's like spun gold. Have you touched it? Spun gold and clouds. <laughs> no, I haven't. That's what I imagine it to be. I'll tell you, I was, you know, and one of the, the ongoing things is kind of the vitriol that these guys get. I mean, Sims gets it bad online. Collinsworth gets Feel it bad seems. on Feel Sims. He gets it bad. And, you know, Him? they don't, they, Collinsworth always says, like, if you feel good about yourself, if you're thinking you have a big head, just go on to Twitter and type your name in because <laughs> you'll feel bad. And some of the stuff that they write to him, you could get arrested for it's insane stuff that people are that angry at Chris Collinsworth for calling a I football. Like Collinsworth. He's I, good. I, th- I think uh, I think Sims uh, uh, he if you key on again like part of a part of people's dislike for announcers comes yeah. with familiarity. Okay. Like I I th- I people are gonna disagree with me here. I but, love but, this. I love talking. Announcers. I like I like John Gruden's enthusiasm. I think I think Collinsworth is great with X's and O's. 
Phil Sims doesn't do a whole lot for me, but I don't key in on those little verbal ticks the way that the way that other viewers do. See, and I, I think Nance and Sims are great on a Sunday, and it just like feels like an important game when they're doing it. And that's kind of familiarity. And I could just promise you that these guys prepare and they know the players and the stuff that they say in the booth is a lot different than what we get on inside the NFL. So it's a cool perspective to see them kind of <clears throat> a little more unbuttoned and kind of just talking about the game, and it's fun. What was your uh, What was your path to becoming a, a writer out of college? How did you? Uh, <laughs> I have an interesting story. How did you get going? Uh, I wrote for the college newspaper, the Emory Wheel, which uh, oh, I Emory, Emory University. Yeah, uh, I actually wrote with a couple other writers who are doing things now: Sam Borden at the New York Times, Ben Volan at the Palm Beach Post, Lindsey Jones. Uh, so we had like a good crew of like sports writers. Um, senior year of college, and this is a story I don't tell often. ESPN was running a show called ESPN Dream Job. <laughs> Do you That's remember the show? You were on that? <laughs> wait, wait, I was not on that. Oh, but let me explain. Oh, oh. I'm even worse. I tried to get on that and couldn't. So, uh, and, and I was in, in Atlanta, where Emory is, and basically you lined up outside an ESPN sport zone in Buckhead, Atlanta, at oh, like a 100 degree day in oh, a suit man. with like a resume. And essentially the show was American Idol for Sports Center anchors. And it lasted for two seasons, I yep. think. It was a cool show. Uh, and it was basically Stuart Scott would like grill you or LeVar Arrington would come on and grill you and you'd have to like do highlights or whatever. I never wanted to be a sports center anchor, but I thought all I want to do is write sports for a living. And if anyone from ESPN is going to be at this audition or at this tryout, I'm going to get something to them and in their hands. So I waited online and uh, we get inside a thing and there's a trivia question and it's 20 questions. And to me, it was like, this is what I live and breathe. I did it. 20 questions got them right. And Howie Schwab, I don't know if that name means anything, from no. Stump the Schwab. You ever oh, see that show? that guy. Yeah, he was yeah. the head of research at ESPN. He goes, who got this 20 out of 20? And I'm like, that was me. He goes, come over here. We talked. We did whatever. We exchanged emails. And after college, they were launching this website called ESPN Page 3. It was like oh, the yeah. redheaded stepchild yeah. of Page 2. Bill Simmons was on page two, Jim Capel, all these great writers. I was like, yeah. Before before blogs existed, page two was awesome. It really was. It really <laughs> was. And we could talk about Simmons for an hour because I, I mean, in college, this was like, I want to be the next Bill Simmons. That's what I wanted to be. What uh, what years were you in college? Just to, I to graduated 04, so okay. I'm a little younger than you, I yeah. think. Um, 2000 myself. Okay, so I'm a little, you got some years on me. Uh, but oh, but in but in oh four or oh five, like that was you just got uh, back on okay. Wednesdays. On Wednesdays, uh, whenever Simmons had he had comps three times a week, so you just afternoons you just hit it. refresh. That like, come on, why? Where's this calm? Yellow this page, yeah? and you just read it and read it, and you print it out, and you take a crap in the bathroom, and you read it and read it. That was it, and I know. Through what a, what a terrible life that was really? for us. I, I, seriously. So <laughs> through, think about that. That was less than a decade ago. We were, I was printing out articles from and posting on Microsoft Word and reading them on like lunch breaks in now the crapper. Now, now you have this that baby. and you like read a sentence. You're like, eh, not interested. Next. I'm like, oh, I, I'm, I'm out of my Twitter timeline. Yeah, <laughs> I guess, exactly. guess I'll be going to my words with friends. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but long story short, I through Howie Schwab, I made in, uh, some inroads with the page three guys, started writing there. FoxSports.com was launching. They liked some of my stuff, reached out to me, and uh, since then just been hustling. So I'm at FoxSports.com. I've been there now like six, seven years and love it. Even even if you don't, if if you've never read uh, Peter's columns and you should, you probably recognize his name uh, while you watch C uh, Fox <laughs> games because you're like looking for fantasy scores. Your name's on the scroll. Uh, I'm is on, on the ticker. The, you're on the ticker. It's so weird. Like like Peter Schrager breaks down this in, in his column on FoxSports.com. Yeah, no, it's funny. Like I've written this book. I've done like three thousand word like profiles and essays and GQ. Like awesome stuff. No one knows. No one cares. You have that ticker. Oh yeah. You get texts from guys you haven't spoken to in ten years, bro. It's I, weird, bro. I, and I'm I like, see, that's I see awesome. Name, I see your name on the ticker, and it's just like, I, I know that guy. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, he's and it, famous. And it's funny, like they they do some of the copy, and it's like, I'll write about Cutler, and they'll put it in like their you know sentence, and it's like, think Jay Cutler sucks. Peter Schrager <laughs> doesn't. Check out his article. I'm like, I don't think he sucks. That was good. That sums up the article. That was great. Um. Uh, tell me, obviously, you have worked closely with Victor Cruz in uh, writing Out of the Blue, your book with him, yeah. his autobiography. Um, give me, uh, tell me a story about him that's that's that, that I won't find in the book. Yeah. All right. So my whole spiel on Cruz is that he's the greatest dude. Like, I don't want to say, I mean, obviously, he, you we are wrote this book. a Giants book. fan, correct? I grew up a Giants fan, okay. yeah. So, like, that was kind of a bias there. And I live in New York. But 
All right. Victor Cruz was the third wide receiver on like a six and six UMass team three years ago. Like he came out of nowhere and that's really true. Uh, but his road to get where he is is awesome. But as far as writing the book together, it was never, there was like no cooler time in my life. I would take a train. He lives in Jersey. I would take a train from New York out to Jersey. He'd pick me up and we would just drive around. He'd listen to hot 97 and we would just talk. And then we would go like to the different places, his high school, his college, all this stuff. Uh, but we, you know, got to know each other real well. The coolest thing, though, with him, or the story that really sums him up, I think, um, he worked at the Garden State Plaza, all right, which is like the suburban mall in any suburban town. Mm -hmm. Uh, He was selling clothes, all right, at a store called Image, which was like, you know, the other store to like Hugo Boss, like across the way. Like, you walk into Hugo Boss, all right, I'm not buying a $100 pair of jeans, I'll go to, (laughs) I'll go to Image. And he was working there, and you could say, oh, he was like, what, middle school? No, when he was in college, he was working at this place, uh, uh, and Strahan once walked in, all right? Now, he's folding clothes, and he goes up to Strahan and basically is like, hey, like, I just, he just gotten kicked out of college for grades from UMass. So he was out of school, did nothing at UMass before like, he got back there. So he's basically thinking, like, this is, I got, like, it's, it's getting pretty bad here. I'm working at the mall, and I'm just hustling to get by. And he had some personal stuff going on. Also, goes up to Strahan and says, hey... And this is right when, like, Strahan's at, like, Strahan's peak. Like, you know, he's right about to retire. He's right before they win the Super Bowl, like, king uh, of the world. You mean, you mean working with Keller? Yeah, Keller I guess it, it, the, there's no peak. I guess this was, like, kind of the, the, the uh, ascent. No, 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 I, I get what you're saying. Continue. Goes up to Strahan, who's got, like, 30 fans around him. and goes, yeah, you know, like, hey, look, I, I love football. I want to play football. I played football on UMass. I got kicked out of school. Like, do you have any advice for me? And Strahan's advice to him, a kid just working at the mall was like, hey, I went to Texas State. And I wasn't a star at Texas State. The uh, the armadillos. I, I believe it is. No, that's what would be. Necessary <laughs> roughness. It was a good Scott Bakula callback. Yeah. Um, and Strahan is basically like, if you're good enough, they'll find you. But you have to get on the field. Like, that's all it is. Like, they'll find you. They will. Bryce Brown on the Eagles. The guy quit the can. You know, they find you. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what Cruz took. And he basically, you know, went to co- community college, went to JUCO, got the grades, got back to UMass, got on the field. Doesn't get drafted, doesn't even come close to being drafted, tries out for the Giants in one of these free agent tryouts. He's the eighth guy on the team, makes it two years ago, gets injured, and then somehow gets on the field week three last year, and he's scores a touchdown, does a solid stance, all pro, and he's still on that rookie contract. So Ooh. he's still, you know, he's the 49th highest paid Giant right he now. He's going to so, get paid. Yeah. Let's, let's hope so. He's a good kid. So his stories to me are always interesting because like you can relate to him. He's not one of these guys where right out of the crib you're playing football and you're going to be a superstar. And that's unique, I think, in the NFL. Um, that's pretty cool. Uh, we're going to roll into uh, the, the troll bag. Ordinarily, I take uh, uh, comments from or questions from Twitter. I'm going to change it up this week. Uh, we're going to talk about some of some of your tweets over the last couple oh, wow. weeks. Oh God. Um, so uh, Let, let's talk about Twitter because I fire these things out thinking like three people are gonna. Oh no no and no! I, no. I, I only have I mean, I'm, I only, but like I got a few thousand followers. But like, I'll get emails from some influential people at some of the companies I'm working for. Like, hey, show with the Twitter. And I'm, I'm watching and listening, <laughs> and, and and I gotta say, uh, there's some things that I very much disagree with. But let's let's start things yeah, yeah. off. One of the things that I I really like about your your uh, this one is uh, can't wait. Best moment of every Sunday oh, night. Heinz time, you, and you go off. You off on Heinz Ward like every single week. I don't know why. I, I think it's jealousy. Like, why is this guy have this amazing gig? Like, halftime with Bob Costas. I would work my entire career and never get to that. But it's unbelievable. Uh, guys, I promise you, if you watch that halftime minute that he does, you will be mesmerized. This week, he said, I believe, and I don't have the, the remember. It was basically the Packers... They're going to play the Giants in the playoff, so they need to get their act together and something, you know, <laughs> trails off. Like, they're not, like, how do you know they're going to play the Packers in the playoffs? Like, there's no preparation, and I, Costas has to be dying. And, uh, well, football night in America is just, it's, it's too crowded. It's always been too crowded. They were like, I actually like that show. Like, we I don't have think it's 17 that bad. guys, uh, 12 of whom are former All Pros. And, like, if, I don't think we'll see Heinz Ward back. Like, again, you like, might. If, um, he if, won Dancing with the Stars, dude. Oh, my gosh. Look, at he smiles. Let's put him on TV. It's an interesting thing. So I actually did an article for Esquire last year talking to some of the different producers and agents in the business saying, what do you guys look for you know, in oh, these I, players? I that. That yeah, was good. and it was an interesting like look. And you'll notice that a lot of the Jets guys go to – Bristol. It's just like so. It's like a it's a passageway. A lot of these guys, the Dancing with the Stars stuff, it does help because yeah. you got the female audience. Some of these guys that you would never expect, like Jeff Saturday. All right, who you're like, all right, I guess he was Peyton Manning's center. 
he's hot. Like people want yeah. him because he was so good during the strike. He represented the players' mm-hmm. union, and people were like, "Oh, Jeff Saturday's got some good insights." And he's so, got an awesome name. Like it, it, Jeff <laughs> Saturday is a name that like that's a that's Saturday a, on Sundays with exactly. Jeff. Exactly. But the guy that they all say is going to be the – well, there's two. But the guy that they all say is going to be the best and he's going to be in the booth, I think, not in a studio show, is Peyton Manning. Let's go to, uh, let's go to this next tweet. Yeah. Um, this is a, a retweet of Jim Rome. You're, it was winners never quit and quitters never win except Bryce Brown. Yeah. So first, – First of all, let me just say – don't retweet Jim. Why? Rome. I like no, Romy. No. See, you, I'm also a sucker for that. See, you you gotta you gotta tune out this. You listen to a lot of sports talk yeah, radio. Yeah, yeah. You gotta stop that, man. That's that'll you, kill you. You hate when I just tweet about Francesca all day, right? Well, it's just, it's, 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 well, it, it's it's strange that that like live tweeting a radio show. It's <laughs> like let listen. me let me turn this <laughs> dial over to 1080 and then use like the, like it's like this ancient. <laughs> so, I, I like, think of it as this ancient technology. It really is. We're all the, we're all at the woods and, and we're at the let campfire. Me use, let me use a Twitter on Gather my smartphone so that. FDR's doing a fireside <laughs> chat. Let's hear Francesca's like, ah. open. I'll tell you something. Rome. See, I get crapped on because I love Rome. I love Francesca. I love Simmons. Oh. And I love Rick Riley. And everyone's like. <laughs> Man. See, this is, this is where. And it's like, you can't be this like young, like up and coming Twitter, like wise guy and like Rick Riley. And I'm like, I grew up with Rick Riley. Like, as, as I, did I worshipped then, Rick, Rick Riley. I and then I've, I've moved on to better things. Is there better things, though? I feel like everyone who yes. just. Now in sports media, there's this thing where it's like someone will tweet like, oh, the great fill in your thing, wrote another epic piece on Skip Bayless. Or wrote, and it's like, you yeah. just crap on other people. Like, no, the best the best sports writer alive is Spencer Hall. You can find him at SBNation.com, and every day should be Saturday. That guy is amazing. Better than anybody working for ESPN or Sports Illustrated. I'm telling you straight That's up. an endorsement. Yep. There you go. That is, that is, that is my endorsement, uh, and it's not just because he's a co-worker. He is fantastic. Yeah. Good reading. Um, but anyway, no, no, uh, Romy, Sclones. No, that's not about, uh, but I mean, it's just such a, he's like, he uses a cliche, except Bryce Brown. I, and I guess because I did a show. Okay. I did a show. Uh, well, yeah, the Bryce Brown story is basically he quit Kansas state and was like, whatever, I'm just going to train for the draft. And he did get drafted and now he's a star. And it's like, I don't really need college football. Anyway, Rome, I did his show and I'd never met Rome and I went out there and it was in LA and I was super excited. I'm like, all right, I'm going to meet Jim Rome. We're going to party. We're going to do all this stuff. We get there. He's the most professional dude. Like, I expected him to be Jim Rome, like, that he's on the air and be like, let's go do, like, you know, let's go party. It's not the case. You go out with Rome and he's just like, all right, thanks, buddy. Really nice guy. And he's like, I'm going back to my family and my kids. And I'm like, I kind of respect that. Um, <laughs> let, let, let's, do you see the, the picture of him with the, the microphone gun? I saw that. Yeah. Uh, that is Showtime basically show. stolen from from Prince. Uh, wow, nice. They, they, Good work. They handed that out in a tiny man competition. That was the award. <laughs> Look at Romy's face. I love it. <laughs> so serious. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> what's what's next here? Hey, Brendan, is my uh, my uh, is my sound okay? I, I'm not. I lost my headphones. So, if uh, if I sound crazy, that's why. <laughs> What's next? Huge games yesterday by Vontaze Burfick and Janoris Jenkins, two rookies that, quote-unquote, experts deemed undraftable back in April. They were your guys. I love these guys. All and right. uh, you, th- this is a, you, you don't really care so much about the, the, pe- the people say, like, no. like, like... I hate red get- flags. I don't have any red flags. Give me the most talented, talented player, and if you put them in the system, they'll work itself out. And in Janoris's case... I've met him. Great kid. He's got four kids out of wedlock. That's the thing with three different women. So everyone said, uh, you know, these old stock character guys. Issues. character issues. Well, he doesn't want to. They don't want to deal with the lawyers. He got kicked off of Florida because of marijuana. Fine. Shows up to the combine and dominated. Like this was the best cornerback at the combine. He was 21 years old. Put him in a pro team. Give him a shot. Why would you pass on that and take some stiff instead? And in Burfick's case, Arizona State, a stud, like just an absolute stud. Again, combine bombed. He failed the marijuana test, the whole thing. Didn't go drafted. He's the best, aside from Levante David on Tampa Bay, he's the best rookie linebacker in football and didn't go drafted. To me, these experts, it's like personal vendettas against kids. Like they're young guys, they're in college. They should know better, but to not draft them, that's just lazy. Yeah. Um, can it, something that irked me, Peter King crediting uh, Jeff Fisher yeah, for, for running making stairs. Janoris, uh, Janoris, he made him run stairs. That's why he picked off a terrible quarterback twice. That was, yeah. Yeah. And, and and Janoris, in his case, and it's also Chris Givens who scored the touchdown. He ran the stairs, too. They hated that. That was embarrassing to them. Why are they running stairs and deactivated? That sucked. Jeff Fisher, we can go into a Jeff Fisher rant, but these, you know, he's great with the media. So sports writers love Jeff Fisher. He's had, I think, seven, eight and eight seasons and has been to one Super Bowl, and they think he's a Hall of Fame coach. No. You know, you can have some questions with the the stuff they've done with the Rams this year, but Janoris Jenkins, that was a smart move by Fisher because he's going to be a talent. Uh, what's What's next here? 
Uh, oh, <laughs> here you go. This is oh, your tweet. I love this. Make all the bad jokes you want, but sports writers shouldn't be weighing in on who Hope Solo chooses to date. Stay in your lane, guys. I still stand behind that. Really? I, so I, you've got a Jeremy Stevens thing because you're a Seahawks fan. I'm not sure what your thoughts are, but I actually, there are some real big nerds out there who write about sports, guys who wouldn't be able to even sit in a room with Hope Solo, guys who wouldn't even have a chance to meet her on you know, Match.com, who are like, Hope Solo deserves it. She's dating a loser. And it's like, get out of here. What is it? To weigh in on someone else's personal life, what if, and just imagine, what if, Someone questioned some of their wives and some of their girlfriends. I think every big name sports writer had some wise ass joke about Hope Solo, not saying, I feel bad for Hope for this and oh, I'm concerned about Hope. It's she's an idiot for dating Jeremy Stevens or marrying David Stevens. Uh, he did kind of rape somebody. That's, um, <laughs> yeah, there's that. Uh, l- l- no, tell me, because these, yeah. are, these are athletes, so sports writers are the ones to, to talk about this. And, and tell me, do you, do you think it's, can I have an opinion about Rihanna dating Chris Brown? So I have thoughts on that whole situation. Yeah. I have I have a lot of thoughts. I haven't been tweeting about it, but I think, I mean, listen, it's see. I think that uh, the great Jenny, what's her name? Uh, uh, you're talking about my wife? No, no, no. The one who <laughs> tweeted that Jenny. that is being deemed oh, Jenny uh, a martyr, like for for luring Chris Brown into some Twitter war, and now she's the greatest thing on earth. Like it, she was taking shots at Chris Brown. He's an idiot. I mean, Chris Brown's an idiot for how he responded. And obviously, I don't you know advocate what he did with Rihanna. That's horrible stuff. And MTV should not be airing his videos and promoting this guy. But. I don't think Chris Brown knows who Jenny Johnson High Five is, and now she's an internet celebrity and is being, you know, de- having a statue built in front of Silicon Valley somewhere for luring Chris Brown into a Twitter war. And then, like, uh, now she's getting death threats and she's all, you know, even better. It's everyone takes shots at everybody on this Twitter now. And it's like, sometimes just stay in your lane. Like, why do you need to pick a fight with a celebrity? Why, why are you paying attention? Why is she following Chris Brown? Oh, she's, she's broken it down before, and she thinks that she doesn't have anything. She, she says, like, he's a talented performer, but, like, he he's basically a, a horrible person who like beat the crap out of Rihanna and then beyond that continued to act like a jackass and an un- unapologetic one with a Today Show experience, etc. What did he do? Did he like ripped off he his shirt. Off, he like ripped off his shirt, threw a chair through a window, <laughs> a stormed act. off. He's just a terrible person. And, and she's like, I'm not gonna let that go. Like Kim, and she does the same thing with Kim Kardashian. Does she? So she trolls these people, but that, she, you wouldn't she, call it trolling. It's not even trolling. Like she just points out that like they're 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 why they're famous and yeah. what they do. And she doesn't let go of it, and um, and and she's like, I can do this, like because like if people took a ma- magnifying glass to my life, they would find bad things, but they wouldn't find that bad this things. bad. Yeah, I get it. So I mean, listen, and I don't know her at all. I didn't I actually. This is embarrassing, Mr. Internet. I am. I didn't know. I never heard of her until this whole situation. Um, but just from the outside, the way outside looking at it, it seems like she was sort of instigating this as well. So uh, three hundred thousand Twitter followers before this whole thing happened. Okay, so, so she's, she's, she's she's legit, and that's that's fine. Um, and the whole situation's unfortunate, but I am by no means advocating Chris Brown and his work or his life or whatever. This whole notion, though, that like somebody who's a sports writer has to stay in a particular lane. Like Michelle Beadle left ESPN so that she could do uh, Access Hollywood on she, or NBC Universal, so she could do sports and entertainment. What do you think about that? <laughs> Me of a Michelle Beadle question. I don't know. I guess it's great. Like no, but I mean, like, I like Beadle. I like I like that she adds. Like you know, she seems like a, a young lady that I would like enjoy a conversation about sports with, and that's cool that she wants to spread her wings and do more things. And that opportunity presented itself. But I would never criticize her and Aaron Andrews for wanting to do more and doing like Dancing with the Stars, or and I would never criticize an athlete for wanting to do some of the other stuff. You know, hosting a TV show or hosting whatever. I I think do as much as you can, but this stuff. When Hope Solo is, you know, going through something in her life and you've got sports writer X taking shots at Hope Solo for who she's dating, I thought that was a little strange. And the complete deluge of tweets we got about it was so bizarre. I'll tell you what. If there had ever been one single good thing that Jeremy Stevens had done with his life, uh, and, and I mean, we're talking this is a guy who had uh, habitual DUIs. Yeah. Uh, was a horrible human being uh, at the University of Washington, where where yeah, she was. Yeah, and there was a five. The I think the Seattle Times did a five piece, like, and I read it all. And he's he's had he's had a bad past, man. And and, and like it's a bad dude. Uh, there is there, there's a guy. So you just said he's a bad dude. So like I can say like if I'm a huge women's soccer fan, and like I love Hope Solo. I'm a big fan of goalkeepers. Like a goalkeeper with an attitude is like my favorite kind yeah. of athlete. And, like, I'm disappointed. I can voice disappointment that, like, an athlete that I really like is marrying an athlete that I really hate. And, I mean, that's, that's that, like, that's... I guess that's Twitter. I mean, I guess that's fine. Would you would you pen an article and, like, criticize 
her data? Like, is that worthy of? That's that's not even worth an article, though. I mean, like, that's that's what Twitter's for. It's 140 yeah. characters. Yeah. I, can, I, uh, I just thought there was a lot of venom out there for Hope Solo dating Jeremy Stevens. Yeah, not concerned, like he's venom the, and he's the sarcasm. Chris, if Chris Brown uh, was an NFL player but also made horrible music, that's Jeremy Stevens. <laughs> And yet, I'd probably be fascinated to sit down and talk with him. Like I'd like oh, to. You think no, terrible? Not me. No. 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 Well, I don't. I don't want to be near him. Okay. Uh, and and finally, this is. Uh, let's close things up. We're we're running late, yeah, yeah, but I'm um, having. We're having too much fun. It's what it is. Um, what's the last one? Oh, it's my man. You did just say you're mad about a picture with you and guy. That's my boy. I won't say Fietti because Flavor he, Town, baby. Yeah, so donkey I, sauce. No, I don't know. This is we were at this party. It was a Super Bowl party a couple oh. of years ago. You and I were both there. I remember I boxed you out from a Trent Green Kurt Warner conversation you oh. were dying to have. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, that sorry. was you'll live. That was a good me. party. It was. And guy was there, and I go, I've seen you before on TV. Let's take a photo. So when all this guy Fieri madness went on, I tweeted out that photo and got like several retweets. And I'm like, no, no, no. I didn't just see guy Fieri. This is from years ago, but look at that dude. Uh, he's making it in America. That was that was 11 p.m. at night, and he had sunglasses on the back <laughs> of his head. Oh God, man! You know that restaurant's in time. I would love to have lunch with you nope. today at that place. Just I, try it out. Try I, out the Rhode Island calamari. No, I I made stew on Sunday. I've got some leftovers. Uh, I'll be. I enjoy eating, yeah. so I'm not going to be going to that restaurant. Flavor Town, baby. The whole, the Welcome whole, to Flavor Town. The whole Dan Rubenstein, my colleague Dan, yeah, yeah. Uh, went there and like <laughs> ate, he ate there ironically. And like I feel like most people <laughs> like that uh, that are in our little internet circle I, are going there to. I know have, it's. I know we're running late in the show, but the fact the New York Times. Were Reviewed Flavor Town USA or whatever it was called. Guys, crazy kicking ass American bar. Come on, they, hey, come sa- on. Savvy move by the New York Times. Yeah, they knew what they were getting yeah. into, that and they yeah. they did it. They again. That, that's it's it's exactly donkey what, sauce. What did you expect? <laughs> All right, let's close things out. I got uh, one thing I want to talk about on, yeah. um, from Sunday. This is uh, the little fumbler portion of the uh, I love thing. This. Uh, fumbler, of course, my column will be running Wednesdays on SB Nation. A good read. It's Thank awesome. you. It is. Thank you. Uh, this week, I, I who does that? Wait, who does all the gi- the gifts? Uh, what's his name? Boyce. Uh, yeah, John Boyce. That throughout baseball season was like I w- that was fa- I bookmarked it. It was fantastic. I got all my friends into it. That stuff's awesome. And Uh-oh. that Thank that you. is good. That is. Thank good you. Stuff. And you comment with Dan on it. It's great. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we got uh, the Colts cheerleaders shaving their yeah. head. Awesome. Uh, I, I, I'm a little conflicted here because, Why? um, that's such a great thing. Uh, by the way, this, uh, the screen cap is courtesy, courtesy of, uh, Timothy Burke of Deadspin at Bubba Prague and, um, not courtesy of the Andrew Siciliano red zone channel, not uh, the NFL uh, network that's, one. That's, yeah, well, whatever, it's you good. know, everybody, I like it. it's good. uh, so, ah, they, wow, what conflicted great cause it's, it's so, it's so, uh, so brave of them to shave their heads, but at the same time, like he's going to live. Okay, so you th- you're being a little cynical about this. I'm I think, being very cynical, and that's I, I, fine. And I know that that's a there's a little I, underlining thing under underneath all the Peter King columns about Chuck Pagano and the uh, shaving the head. There's an underbelly of the internet saying, guys, I I, I have, put off the pedal here. Let's. I mean, again, these women so so brave to like awesome. not just shave their head, but shave their head awesome. in front of tens of thousands of people. And they're beautiful, both of them. So that's cool. I and, think which it's great. makes them and the fact they they're beautiful and in Indianapolis makes them like supermodels, super rare. Uh, I just, we were there for the Super Bowl last year. Super rare. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'm a cynical, terrible person. They're gorgeous. Both of them. I love this. This is a great story. And I'm just kidding about the Indianapolis stuff. Awesome city. Um, (laughs) (laughs) you liar. (laughs) It is not an awesome city. I actually, the Super Bowl was awesome last year, but Uh, these girls, I love it. I, I, I want to be a cynic. I can't be, but to say I'm the same guy who still reads Rick Riley. Yeah. So yeah, you're not. You're the thing is, uh, I gotta say, you you bridge the gap. I you're, try. You're you're because I respect like, journalism. You've got you've got one leg in the blogosphere. Well, you've got a toe in the blogosphere, and the rest of you is this like is mainstream. This gonna help. I might get two toes after this. All right. Hopefully. All right. Well, um, I don't know. Whew, that was fun, and was we awesome. ran a little bit late today, but that was a lot of fun. I didn't wear a suit like Tiki, but I feel good. No, uh, put uh, put your book up so everybody can see it. The book is Out of the Blue, Victor Cruz's autobiography. Great Number one story. in NFC Pro Bowl wide receiver voting right now. Keep All that right. up. He needs a trip to Hawaii. Follow Peter Schrager on Twitter at, at P. Schrags, um, FoxSports.com, yep. GQ. Yep. And, uh, of course, watch Showtime for Inside the NFL. Wednesday, Cheat Sheet is on FoxSports.com, and then Inside the NFL is on Wednesdays as well. So check All those right. out. Thanks so much, Peter. It was a fun time. I loved and it. We'll see you next week for another episode of Offsides. Check us out every Tuesday. Jeremy Stevens, buddy. All right. No. <laughs> <laughs>